Excellent. Thank you, Emory. And I'm going to ask everyone to stay muted unless you are um, have a speaking or singing part in the service, please. Uh, Stan is off today, having a well-deserved weekend off after uh, filling in for me uh, while I was away. So um, he's fine. He's just off. A couple of announcements. Um, we will have Compline tonight at nine o'clock at our usual time. The vigil will uh, go on today. Um, it's not too cold for that. Um, this is our official announcement of our annual meeting, which will take place on Sunday, January 24th at the 10 o'clock hour. Um, we anticipate that the entire service and meeting will take maybe an hour, maybe just a little bit more. We're going to fold as much of the service into the, of the meeting into the service as possible, but there are a few business things we'll have to do right after the service ends. So hope that you'll be able to attend that. Um, invite you to participate with us in uh, the anti-racism work that we're doing as a cathedral and as a diocese. As a cathedral, we're doing some book reads over the next year. The first one we're reading is The Hate You Give, uh, and then having some conversation around that before Lent begins. Uh, and then during Lent, we're gonna read uh, Stand Your Ground, by uh, the Reverend, uh, the very Reverend uh, Kelly Brown Douglas, who's an Episcopal priest and Dean of the Divinity School, Episcopal Divinity School at Union Theological Seminary. Uh, it's a fantastic book. I saw a couple heads nod that sort of helps us to understand a little bit about how we got to where we are, especially with the stand your ground laws. And the events of this past week, uh, I hope we can all see it's more important than ever that we engage in this holy and important work. Um, I was asked by a couple people during after Wednesday to, uh, are we gonna have some prayer services to sort of um, spend some time together after the chaos of the events that unfolded on Wednesday. And just a reminder to everyone that we do have Compline every Sunday night at nine and morning prayer Monday through Friday at 8.30 all through Zoom. Uh, the, the links are on our website. Um, and usually go up on Facebook right before the service starts. So you're welcome to join us for any of those. We will have a special evening prayer the night before the inauguration at six o'clock. We'll put that in the e-news. So the eve of the inauguration, we will have a prayer service um, as we pray for the health of our nation. Today's service has been altered slightly um, in light of the events of this week. And there are a couple things that are not in your bulletin. So if you are bulletin dependent, uh, they will be on the screen, but I will announce those things that are not in the bulletin. They are in the prayer book. I'll announce those pages. So if you are bulletin dependent, you'd like to grab a prayer book for this service, please do. Uh, and lastly, if you are new to us this morning, if it's your first or second time worshiping with us in this format, it's hard for us to tell who's who in these little boxes that are continually moving on the screen as people turn their video on and off or turn their sound on and off. Um, so if you could just say hi to us in the chat, and if you are of a mind to leave us some contact information, that would be great. Uh, but that helps us to know who you are uh, so we can welcome you properly. So welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us for the first or second time. Uh, just give us a shout out in the chat. If you're not sure about chat, just take your mouse down to the bottom of your black screen and there's a, a little comment box that says chat. If you click on that, a box will pop up for you. And at the bottom of that box, you can enter some typing, hit enter and it's in the chat. Um, that would be terrific. All right then, I'm going to share my screen for the service and we will be.
blessed be God, most holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity. And blessed be God's reign now and forever. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan, proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. Here ends the reading. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. <coughs> The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty, mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar tree. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a cow. And Mount Hermon, the young wild ox. 
The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe. And strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord. All are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. A reading from Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all of the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, a one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Here ends the reading. He saw the heavens torn apart. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I have to confess to you that I spent a great deal of time on Friday staring at a blank page on my computer screen, willing the words to come, wondering just what God wants us to hear during such a time as this. And as I waited, as I stared, as I prayed, as I cried, I was repeatedly struck by two images. The first was the formless void we read of in Genesis this morning, the beginning of creation the nothingness that existed before God called it into being, the chaos, the swirling void. The second image that was with me was of Jesus coming up out of the water. And I mean a very particular image. Maybe you've seen it in popular depictions of this moment. In most of these depictions, we see Jesus in close-up. His head is flung back. His arms are thrown out. Water is flying everywhere. His face is toward the heavens, and the sky is lit up 
and beams of light come down upon Jesus. There is nothing mundane or tame about that image. It is wild. It is larger than life. It is scarily holy. Now, I don't think my baptism was quite like that. Yours probably wasn't either. We were probably dressed in too many layers of white satin and crinoline. We were probably held in the arms of a priest and a few drops of water were spilled onto us. We might have cried. We were dried off, kissed, blessed, and went about our napping on schedule. But though the actual event of our baptism may not have held the visual drama of the baptism of Jesus, we must understand that it was no less dramatic for its radical participation in God's mission for God's people. The very act of baptizing a child, the very act of choosing to be baptized as an adult is an act of insurrection against the powers of evil. When Jesus came up out of that water long ago, God's message came through loud and clear. This, God said, this is the culmination of all I have tried to do. This is my son. This is my beloved. He will lead you back to me. He will show you how to love. He will be your salvation and guide. Listen to him. And you, my son, are my beloved, and I love you. These two images, chaos, formless void, and the dramatic rebirth of Jesus in baptism are what we must hold on to in times such as these. On the Feast of the Epiphany, the day we celebrated the revelation of Jesus to the Gentiles, we watched chaos unfold at and in our nation's capital. Chaos that came with Confederate flags and messages of anti-Semitism, a lynching podium, a guillotine, zip ties ready to be used to capture members of Congress. And perhaps worst of all, signs proclaiming God's favor upon the chaos and signs reading Jesus saves. Such arrogant and heretical displays of Christian nationalism have no place in our understanding of the Christian faith. Jesus Christ, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit are not Americans, they are not white, they have no political agenda except one, to feed the hungry, free the captives, shelter the homeless, welcome the stranger, and give love and mercy without condition. The heavens were torn apart when Jesus was baptized. The world was shaken. The chaos was warned. Evil was put on notice. This, says God, this is the way, the truth, the life. The chaos we saw on Wednesday, the chaos that continues on now, is no less than the same chaos that Jesus was born into. The chaos of corrupt power, of gullible and angry and tired citizens. The chaos of fear, of poverty, of ignorance, of mixed messages and corrupt institutions. And it is out of that chaos that our baptism is born. It is out of that evil that comes our promise to resist evil. It is out of that corruption that comes our promise to always speak the truth. And it is out of that empty void 
that comes the promise of the Prince of Peace. We, we must rise through the waters of our baptism just as Jesus rose, larger than life, arms wide open, ready to give and receive, flinging holy water all over the place, turning our face to the one God of all, casting off the works of darkness and putting on the armor of light. Beloved, the events of the past many weeks and especially the past several days are revelatory for us. It means our job is not yet done. The revelation of Jesus Christ is partially in our hands and it, with the guidance of our loving God, we must continue that revelation every day. Miroslav Wolf, theologian and director of the Center for Faith and Culture at Yale University, leaves us with this guidance as an answer to the question, what must we do? He writes, we must commit firmly to the truth, even and especially when it hurts our pride, when we lose and when it calls for sacrifice. We must orient ourselves toward peace and bearing with one another, being ready to forgive as we have been forgiven. Indeed, our commitment to the truth is never at odds with love of neighbor. Peace is, in fact, unintelligible and unimaginable apart from the truth of Christ. We must stand up for the downtrodden, marginalized, and afflicted speaking and acting on their behalf for their good, for their healing, and for their inclusion in flourishing. We must never compromise or distort Christian faith in service to the idol of political power. We must restore confidence in our democracy and trust in each other. Suspicion and conspiracy theories have distorted and disconnected us from reality. We must live constantly from the deep truth that our worth doesn't come from the victory, triumph, or any other kind of power or influence. Our worth is secured by the love of God for us. May we all become instruments of peace in this time of conflict. Indeed, instruments of peace. Most of us have prayed the prayer that contains those words hundreds, maybe thousands of times. We are going to pray it again. And as we do, I invite you to imagine your words overcoming the chaos we just saw. Your words falling like a blanket on evil. Your words tearing open your heart and the hearts of those around you and feeling God's mercy and love pouring into you. And then go out into the world acting as if the truth of this prayer has already come, because it has. Let us pray. Make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen and amen.
This morning, we will renew our baptismal vows, remembering the promises that we once made, the promises we make every time someone is baptized among us, the promises we must live by. Through the mystery of the passion, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you during this time of national turmoil to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic church. If you don't have a bulletin or a screen in front of you, we are on page 292 of the prayer book. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now let us pray for the church and for the world. During the stillness after each bidding, I invite you to add your prayers in the chat box or aloud at home or in your heart. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Shannon, for this gathering, for all ministers and people Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I 
I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially for the James O'Donnell, for those killed in the riot in our nation's capital, the two names we know, United States Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick and Ashley Babbitt. For those who died in the plane crash in Indonesia and the fatal shootings in Chicago, pray for those who have died. I ask your thanksgiving for friends and family, especially those gathered around Dottie Darling for her 100th birthday. Pray in gratitude for all of God's blessings. I ask your prayers for those for whom our prayers have been asked. We pray for Marion, Rachel, Elizabeth, Ian, and Jesse, staff in, and residents of all long-term care facilities, especially for Elderwood in Burlington, Rose, Elizabeth, Margaret, Dave, Pat, David, Rick, Debbie, Naomi, Helen, Mary, Leo, we pray for Bram, our seminarian, for those in the youth confirmation group, Anna, Emma, Jonas, Ngang, Paige, Sylvia, and Thomas. And we pray for Luz, Luna, and her four children who are searching for a home in Meriden. We give thanks for the choir and for Mark, Give thanks for the life and work of Gloria Carpenter, who is the wife of Al's cousin, and Dennis Jameson, Nadine's friend. We give thanks for the welcome offered by this community to those who are joining us during COVID. We give thanks for the birthday of the Bishop of New Hampshire. We pray for USCP officer Howard Liebengood who died of his injuries earlier today. We pray for the church to offer itself into this chaos. We pray for all persons who are able to receive the vaccine, that they take it willingly and easily. We pray for all who are contemplating or have committed suicide during this difficult time especially for Officer Liebengood. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart that barriers which divide us may crumble suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen.
Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Together let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Now may Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, revealed to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon and among you this day, and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.
Amen to that.